Hide this out from Pimax. Got some tools here and a crystal, which right now has the highest clarity of consumer VR. Um, and inside are glasses for lenses. There's a chip for processing. There's cooling, eye tracking, four cameras for external tracking. Uh, there's internal storage and there's a lot more. So let's take it apart and see how it's built and how it's designed. So what we really want to take a look at is how Crystal can achieve this incredible clarity. So first uh, let's start by taking out the battery and make sure there's no power on it. Battery uh, goes off like that. Um, and then also we can take off some very easily replaceable parts. Uh, don't require any tools yet, which is the, the face foam. And actually there's foam around your ears and for the back of your head also. Uh, because if you're using a VR headset for a long time, then sweat starts to build up. So those might be the first parts you might want to replace after using the crystal for a long time. And then actually these go off quite easily, they're all felt thrown. So um, these two parts here. And the main part for your face. And actually we can already remove the full face interface. This is designed to make the headset fully dark and cover your face. Um, and then let's also re remove the back of the headset. Let's first unplug the earphones. Okay. Okay, and that's two. And then uh, let's take out these screws here. And also we can take off the display port cable and the top strap. This one is harder to get out. Uh, this one delivers the power from the battery to the headset. And there's electricity cables going through here. Uh, we'll take a look at it later. Uh, okay, then the next part, probably one of the most important parts are the two glass spheric lenses. Uh, this is why the crystal is named crystal because it's the only VR headset with glass lenses and they're aspheric. Uh, which also contribute to the very high clarity. Uh, they're very easily uh, to uh, replace in chains, for instance, with uh, big FOV lenses. So we take out the screws and then uh, take out the lenses. Um, we can take a closer look at the lens. Um, I won't take it apart now, but inside here are 10 infrared lights and they don't do the eye tracking, but they illuminate your eye. You won't see them yourself, but they help the eye tracking uh, camera, which is inside here, to easily track your eyes and more accurately. Tracking powers dynamic foveated rendering, which reduces load on your GPU. And then here we have uh, three magnets that help connect it to the lens barrel. And here's a chip that powers the infrared lights, but also helps tell the headset which lenses you're using. So for instance, the 35 PPD, which are these ones, but also 42 PPD or the big FOV. Okay, so here are two lens barrels, but we'll come back to that later. And this fabric helps blacken your whole vision so you, there's no light leakage. I'll take the part a little bit. And then we'll move to the front. Okay, so let's uh, take a faceplate. 
Um, there's not a lot happening inside here. It's all here. So here's the 2.4G antenna. So this one actually we have to uh, unstick. And then uh, let's take out this part. Okay, then we can take out this part. We can take out the protections from the cameras. So this is a 2.4G antenna, which is connecting some data from the controllers. For instance, if you press a button or pull a trigger, and also each controller has a IMU chip, inertial measurement unit, which is uh, collecting data how you position the controller, like the yaw and tilt. Um, that data is sent here to the headset. And actually the headset itself also has an IMU unit. So that is uh, calculating how you position the headset on your head, tilt and yaw. And then the tracking is done on another way, which is the external tracking cameras. So these are four external cameras. They also track the controllers. Um, actually here we have an open one. Controllers have a tracking ring with 15 infrared lights. Um, and these emit yeah, infrared lights and, and they have some a little bit of foam here so that the light they emit is very sharp, doesn't scatter around, but it, it's quite focused which improves the tracking accuracy um, and that is captured by cameras so these four cameras they look at, uh, at at your room and as you move the headset it will send that information back to the headset and together with the IMU data and from the controllers that's all being processed on the chip we'll come back to that later okay so let's take it apart a bit more So here you can also see the electricity cables coming from the battery. Um, so let's uh, take it out further. So let's take out the fans and the heat sink. Yeah, so here's some uh, thermal paste processing chip and then this is uh, copper to uh, make an efficient heat sink and these are the, the fans so they take in air here and they blow it out on the top look at the front this is uh, actually where the lighthouse faceplate connects so future MR faceplate cover this is the Toby eye tracking board um, and we have these two cables here Let's go to the lens barrels. These provide the eye tracking data. We also have these two external track cameras. They also connect to the Toby board. They're not directly related to the Toby eye tracking module, but it's convenient to put them here and, and they bring back the data anyway to the Qualcomm chip. So this is the board for the one of the panels and then this is the right board for the other panel. Actually, this is one of those QLED panels powering the crystal so there's two of them so actually they sit like this and this cable you can see it goes back like this so here you can also see that it's battery actually the crystal is powered by a big battery but if you want to do a hot swap so you don't really want to turn off the headset and replace the battery you can do that for the little time there's no battery connected this little battery will power crystal so you don't have to turn it off while you swap the battery. Let's look at the main board here. The IPD is set here with this little engine that powers this screw here and that sets the lenses on the correct distance. The engine doesn't actually read the distance that's done here because this is much more accurate. You can see that here. So that's telling Crystal what the distance is of the lenses right now. There's two ways to set IPD. One is manually, so with these two buttons, and those are here. And there's also auto IPD uh, because the crystal has eye tracking. Then uh, this will be set automatically for your 
eye distance. So here we have actually the main chip. This is the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 chip, powering the whole device for PC VR, but also standalone. So on top of the XR2 chip, we have eight gigabytes of RAM. And on top of that, we have some thermal paste to help with cooling. Then next to that is 256 gigabytes of internal storage, which is very useful for our standalone mode. Then here we have the DP cable connector. So the DP cable is put in here. And then that data is sent first to the bridge, and then it's sent to the Qualcomm XR2 chip for further processing. And that's also why Crystal can run such a high resolution, still at 120 Hertz stable. Let's go back here. This USB-C port for any accessories you have that is entering here. Um, so again, this is the bridge. Then here we have the power supply from, coming from the battery. Then this little black square here is uh, for the 60T Airlink module. That module will be uh, can be placed here. That, so that's already on all the crystals. It's, it's ready. Uh, we're just waiting for the module to be ready. Um, so that will be processed here. And then here is the Wi-Fi chip. Yeah, then moving further on, this is the power button. That's here. And then volume up, volume down. And then here we have PC VR and standalone switch, which, which is just here. And then here we have another USB-C. This is also for accessories and also for updating the firmware. Here's the USB-C for accessories such as the hand tracking module, as well as the wear detection sensor. Um, so that is coming from here and sent to the sent to the chip here. And the crystal has three microphones. So where are they? Um, there's one on the top, which is over here, and two at the bottom. So actually tiny holes, but they work well. There's also a headphone jacket, which is which goes in here, so that, that's, that's located here. Now one thing to note about the exoskeleton is that it's slightly tilted in typical Pimax fashion. That's because the human eye sees more field of view on the outside rather than the inside. Um, so by tilting them, we increase the FOV. Okay, then let's look at the last part, which is uh, happening inside here. So there's a tilted panel and actually has two purposes. One is to keep dirt away from the QLED panel. You can just clean this uh, if, if you want. If there's any dirt on it, you can just clean them. Um, and the other purpose is to reflect the infrared lights coming from your eyes into the Tobi eye tracking sensor. Here's the connection for the lenses to give them some power for the infrared lights, but also data transfer for letting the headset know which lens is being used. And here are the three magnets for securing the lenses. And then the eye tracking camera, so there's one here and there's one here, and that does eye tracking at 120 hertz. So again, underneath here are two QLED panels. So basically, uh, the lens barrel is fit on it like this. Okay, so that's the Pimax Crystal, um, and let's put it back together.